Today is the low Sunday. Dominican Albis, uh, white Sunday. And um, here in New Jersey, I guess it is. So then the epistle for this low Sunday, Dominican Albis. Is taken from First Epistle of St. John, chapter 5. Dearly beloved, whatever is born of God overcometh the world. And this is the victory which overcometh the world, our faith. Who is he that overcometh the world but he that believeth that Jesus is the Son of God? This is he that came by water and blood, Jesus Christ, not by water only, but by water and blood. And it is the Spirit which testifieth that Christ is the truth. And that there are three who give testimony in heaven, the Father, the Word, and the Holy Ghost, and these three are one. There are three that give testimony on earth, the Spirit, the water, and the blood, and these three are one. If you receive the testimony of man, the testimony of God is greater. For this is the testimony of God which is greater, because he that testified of his Son, he that believeth in the Son of God, hath the testimony of God in himself. From the Gospel, taken up according to St. John, chapter 20. At that time, when it was late in the same day, the first of the week, and the doors were shut, where the disciples were gathered in, peace be to you. When he had said this, he showed them his hands and his side. The disciples therefore were glad, and when they saw the Lord, and he said therefore to them again, peace be to you. As the Father hath sent me, I also send you. When he had said this, he breathed on them, and he said to them, Receive ye the Holy Ghost. Whose sins you shall forgive, they are forgiven them. Who sins you shall retain, they are retained. Now Thomas, one of the twelve, who is called Didymus, was not with them when Jesus came. The other disciples therefore said to him, We have seen the Lord. But he said to them, Except I shall see in his hands the print of the nails, and put my finger into the place of the nails, and put my hand into his side, I will not believe. And after eight days again his disciples were within, and Thomas with them. Jesus cometh, the doors being shut. And stood in the midst of them and said, Peace be to you. Then he said to Thomas, Put in thy finger hither, and see my hands, and bring hither thy hand, and put it into my side. And be not unbelieving, but believing. Thomas answered and said to him, My Lord and my God. And Jesus said to him, Because thou hast seen me, Thomas, thou hast believed. Blessed are they that have not seen and have believed. Many other signs also did Jesus in the sight of the disciples, which are not written in this book. And these are written, that you may believe that Jesus is the Son of is the Christ, the Son of God, and that believing you may have life in his name. Those are the words of today's holy gospel. To the confederations on this sacred day, which you give Paul maybe in the early days of the church. Trinity Sunday is a new feast when we started maybe less than 100 years ago, and a little bit long, not, much, not very long ago. And Trinity Sunday, of course, is the Sunday after Pentecost. As said, Sunday was normally considered the first Sunday of Pentecost, Charity of Christ, and the great, great epistle on charity. And today could be called perhaps the original Trinity Sunday. This Sunday, which is now by modernists called Mercy Sunday, which is a, a, a following of a false devotion condemned by the church a hundred years ago. But we need not worry about that. We consider rather the sacredness of this day. Eight days ago, eight days ago was Easter, and this is the eighth day, and then on day of Easter, the converts, the adult converts, were baptized. And so many converts baptized on that Easter Sunday, during the Paschal Vigil, and they are made to wear a white garment, which would be like a white robe, kind of like my owl that I'm wearing, that they would wear every day until today. And today is called, that's why today is called White Sunday in Latin, Dominica and Albis. Because on this day, the albs, their white albs that they would wear, will be removed. They would come to the church, and they would be then reminded by the priest that you are now no longer going to carry this visible white garment. But we would not take off your white garment. For the white garment, the physical one, we must remove. But the white garment must enter your mind. The white garment must enter your heart. The white garment must enter your entire being. <clears throat> and you must carry that white garment to souls. And this is the white garment of the Blessed Trinity. You know, it's interesting today, 
that we consider it is so good to be moral, so very good to be moral. And if you're, some people are traditional, and some people are conservative, and some people are liberal, and some people are Protestants, and some people are different kinds of religions, but as long as they mean very well, and they're moral, then it doesn't matter so much what they believe. We want them, of course, to believe the truth. But this is, what, this is not what the deacon, St. Athanasius, said. A deacon went to the council of Nicaea, a young deacon named Athanasius, and he wrote the creed. He was not a bishop at the time, he was only a deacon. And the deacon wrote the creed, and he said, it must be known with absolute certainty that no man can be saved unless he believe every word contained in this creed. Unless he believe every word, it is impossible. He must know that without doubt, he shall perish. I teach people many things nowadays. But today is the day in which we read in the epistle, 1 John chapter 5. Not the Gospel of St. John, but the epistle of St. John. And we read very sacred words written by St. John, the apostle, 2,000 years ago. In which he said, three give testimony in heaven. The Father, the Word, and the Holy Ghost. And these three are one. And three give testimony on earth. The Spirit, the water, and the blood. And these three are one. A lot of ink has been spilled over those words. Those words written by St. John 2,000 years ago. Almost 1,900 years ago when he was an old man. And you'll see in many books before Vatican II written about this passage that, in fact, this is an example of a passage. You learn it in the New Seminary in Virginia, in the Seminary of the Trinity of St. Peter, and in the adult seminaries. They'll learn these things. They study sacred scripture. And they will learn that this passage, now we all know that Jesus Christ is God. We all believe in the Blessed Trinity. But when we see this passage, 1 John 5, we recognize this was not in the original Greek. Because John wrote in the original Greek only three give testimony on earth, the Spirit, the water, and the blood. And clearly it refers to the Blessed Trinity, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost, which was written originally in the gloss, which is the side margin. And some scribe accidentally copied over well, this is that, that from, to the main part of the text, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost. He said, three give testimony in heaven, the Father, the Word, and the Holy Ghost. And these three are one. And three give testimony testimony on earth, the spirit, the water, and the blood, these three are one. And so we have a clear Trinitarian reference in the early stages of St. John when men, we, maybe this wasn't really there. Never mind what the Council of Trent says. Never mind what that, that this was scribe. Mike can understand a scribe making a mistake. We mentioned in the first sermon. Aminadeb, Abibadeb, Abibadeb, Abibadeb. Now when he writes Aminadeb, Abibadeb, Abibadeb, maybe he's going to make a mistake. And he doesn't copy it down right. Maybe. But by the way, in the genealogies, there's no mistakes. But is he going to make a mistake? Father, Son, Holy Ghost? Is that a likely mistake a scribe is going to make? In copying down the sacred scripture? Absolutely not. This is the teaching of the modernists of over 100 years ago that this passage which you read on this Sunday is not really written by the Holy Ghost. And the same John never said this testimony, give a testimony in heaven, which is the Father, the Word, and the Holy Ghost. And these are lies. The Holy Ghost did inspire these sacred words. They are the true words of God. And also, what is the point of them? These words were chosen to be given on this low Sunday because God is the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost. He is three in one. St. Bonaventure says, wherever God is, there is always going to be three in one. You'll never find one without three. You'll never find three without one, wherever God is. And so the priests were to instruct the young man or young lady who received the Holy Faith last week. You have the faith. Is it just spirit? Is it just breath? In this case, the spirit stands for the Father. Is it just water, which stands for the Son? Is it just blood, which stands for the Holy Ghost? No, there must be a testimony. And the testimony is, you must believe in your spirit every word that proceeded from God the Father. God the Father said, let there be light, and that times in the Holy Gospel, this is my beloved Son. And when he said those words, guess what? He was speaking about his beloved Son. And we believe that that man, Jesus Christ, and the Son sent the paraclete, who is the Holy Ghost, and St. John, the beloved disciple. 
put his head on the heart of Christ. And he knew this better than any of us. He didn't make a mistake. He did not leave out the blessed Trinity. And we read the words in the, in, in the God epistle today of the wise old St. John. He'd been around for a long time now. He was 16 years old when he met the Lord Jesus Christ. He was 19 years old when he was consecrated to bishop on that Holy Thursday. And now he's 90 years old. He's been a priest and bishop for a long time. And he writes these words after all these years of experience from that day when he put his head on the heart of Christ. Those three hours transformed that beloved disciple. There are two things that made him the beloved disciple. He knew when to put his head on the heart of Christ. And he took Christ's mother into his home. That's the beloved disciple. No one to put your head on the heart of Christ when he did not believe it was the Last Supper. He didn't know that this would be the Last Supper. He thought there would be many other suppers. He didn't know it was the end. He didn't know the crucifixion was going to happen. But he knew that something sacred was happening during these three hours. The three hours that our Lord sat at table with his twelve apostles. Judas included. And Judas was there and thought he was a rabbi. St. John notes that this man thinks he's a rabbi. This man thinks he's a teacher. The Protestants think he's a teacher. Modern philosophers think he's a teacher. He is not a teacher. He's not a rabbi. Somehow he became a rabbi, not a teacher. No, he is Lord. He said, I, Lord, you are the Lord of every part of my mind, every part of my heart, every choice I ever make. You're the Lord of everything that has to go inside of me. I make no decisions without reference to my Lord. He is not just a teacher. St. John put his head on the heart of our Lord Jesus Christ and listened to those words that he would write down in the Gospel of St. John, chapter 13, 14, 15, 16, and 17. Five chapters of his 21-chapter gospel. A quarter of his gospel devoted, more of that in text, to these hours that transformed his life. And what did he say many years later? There are many wicked things in the world. Dearly beloved, and this is the victory which overcometh the world, our faith. How important is our faith or my faith? The fact is that our faith is the most terrifying thing to the devil. The most terrifying thing to hell. We believe that when we go into battle, we have to carry many weapons. Our Lord Jesus Christ told his apostles, don't carry a script. You walk to the ends of the earth just with what you have on your hands and your feet. And don't carry anything else. And when you arrive, that ragged apostle Thomas, the doubting Thomas, when he arrived in India by himself, what did he say to a land now of 1 billion, 200 million people? He came into that land and he said, the kingdom of God has arrived. And he was wise, like Bishop Dagger John Hughes, Bishop of New York, back in the 1840s, when they were saying Catholics are not good Americans, and Catholics are trying to conquer America to become papists. And they're trying to make it become under the Pope. And so Bishop Dagger John Hughes got up in St. Patrick's Cathedral before it was constructed, but the day of the consecration that was not yet built yet. And he said, I'm hearing these rumors. I'm hearing these rumors that America, that we Catholics are trying to conquer America. I want to take it known and say on, they are not rumors. <laughs> we are here. I don't want to hear anything more about rumors. We're here to take over this land. We're here to bring it under Christ. We're here to make everyone here become a follower of Christ. I don't want to hear anything more about rumors. That's the way a bishop is supposed to speak. Now, what is it that makes him do that? Testimony. There are three that bear testimony on earth. The spirit, the water, and the blood. It is not enough to have... And so the priest is supposed to instruct the young Catholic today. All right, you, you learned your catechism. You read your holy catechism. You memorized all the things the test. You know the teachings of our sacred scripture. You know the story of our Lord Jesus Christ. It is in your spirit. 
That's nice and touched. No one cares about your spirit. No one cares about ptosis. You got bad breath. No one cares about your bad breath. Take that breath and take that spirit and go out into the world and wash it with water. Earth with water and drowned it. And only those who were inside of the ark were saved from that water. And there's another water that we read about today in the Vidyaquam. We sing about during the season of, Christ, of, of Paschal Tide. I saw water flowing out from the side of Christ, and to whom the water came, they were saved. Take this water, carry it with you. It's hard to get this water out, because our holy master, he hung on the cross. He died, and the water was still in him. And it was after his death, when he was dead for several hours, that a soldier came who hated him, and the soldier pierced his heart, and finally out came the water. It's hard to get that water out. When you get confirmed, what happens? When you get confirmed, you kneel down in front of the bishop, and the bishop gives you a slap. He gives you a slap on the side of the cheek. Do you want to have your faith? Do you want to be a soldier of Christ? Do you want to carry Christ to the ends of the world? Because that's why he made you. Be ready for a few slaps. Be ready for a few struggles. Be ready for a couple of sorrows. Be ready for a battle. And stand with Christ under a slap. Because if you really love him, and if you really adore him in your heart, you will be slapped. And if you don't, no need to be confirmed. Don't become a soldier. Don't waste your time. Don't be a deserter. For our faith was meant to be carried by us, real human beings. And so St. John says, what conquers the world? Our faith. Right now we've got a terrible crisis going on called the coronavirus. I checked with Sasquatch a couple weeks ago. I went to Seattle. I visited Sasquatch. I visited Bigfoot. No report of the virus. <laughs> Visited all the people in Seattle. No report of the virus. <laughs> Terrible thing. Just nobody's got the stupid virus. <laughs> Those that claim that they're dying of the virus, well, it just happens another day, yesterday, another man. It was terrible. Terrible thing happened. He was driving 90 miles an hour down the road. He went off the side of the road, ran into a concrete wall, and his face went straight into the coronavirus. <laughs> Died instantly <laughs> from the virus. <laughs> Everybody's dying from the virus. It's just it happens to be coincidentally in a car accident. It happens to be coincidentally with stage 5 cancer. It happens to be coincidentally with major heart problems. It happens to be coincidentally when they're only young people of 97 years old dying of some other disease. Dying of the virus. And they're building tents. we got to deal with the virus. You know the most important thing about this virus? It's spreading throughout the whole world. And we have to fight against the virus. What's going to conquer the virus? Social distancing. Remember, we're all in this together. Stay apart. Mm. It's how you get together. Mm. And this is the wisdom of the world. And Catholics think it makes sense. And what about that water? Whatever you do, stay away from water. It spreads the virus. Because mm. after all, what do the Catholics do? Including our beloved traditional Catholics. What do they do on this first week, March the 15th? Our superior Father Wegner and the Society of St. Pius X followed all the noble sorto. Everybody did it. Take the holy water out of the holy water fonts because it might spread the virus. Everyone knows if you stink, whatever you do, don't take a bath. You'll spread the stink. Keep the dirt in yourself. Keep the smell in yourself. Don't spread it by using water. What the heck is your problem? And so we are to so stay away from water if you want to be safe. And this is wisdom. What conquers the coronavirus or any other virus? Our faith. And this is a test. How much is our faith inside of us? Do we have faith? Where do you go when you have a trouble? Even a fake trouble. If you're scared of the boogeyman, talk to your guardian angel about it. He knows how to deal with boogeyman. If you're scared of the devil, talk to your guardian He knows about devils too. He knows how to whack devils, and he'll tell you how to get over the boogeyman problem, too, if he has in his spare time. But the fact is, we know that our water wipes away sin. The water solves the problem. 
Water is necessary, and holy water drives out the devil, and holy water has a sacred salt in it that cleanses, and the devil hates holy water. And so what does he tell? Ye priests of God. It says the Lamentations chapter 2, the reading on Good Friday in the Holy Bravery, the Tenebrae. God will send prophets, God will send prophets, to say foolish and vain things that the people want to hear. And they will hear the foolish and vain babblings of the prophets, and they shall be cursed. Foolish and vain things. You want to be safe? Take holy water out of the fonts. What is it that conquers the world? Our faith. Not our weapons. Not our intelligence. Not our, 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 our skills and practices, whatever they might be. Not our friends. Our faith. This faith must be not just beliefs. But what is this faith? To God, like we say to a child. Faith. What does faith offer to you? Eternal life. If then you wish eternal life, and there's a long section in the baptism of the adult, you must believe that there are three persons in one God, and the Father is God, and the Son is God, and the Holy Ghost is God, and the Father is not the Son, and the Son is not the Holy Ghost, and the Holy Ghost is not the Son or the Father. And these three are one and the same God. It is repeated multiple times. Do you want to be saved? Do you want to, be, do you want to overcome? your immorality problems? Do you want to overcome your impurity problems? Do you want to overcome your drinking problems? Do you want to overcome your anger problems? Do you want to overcome your social problems? Do you want to overcome any of your problems? What must you believe in? The Father and the Son and the Holy Ghost. It's the first prayer that we learn as a little child. What should a mother teach a child? Take your hand and make the sign of the cross. And what is that sign? The, Father, the Son and the Holy Ghost. That is a prayer. It is faith. The Father is the Creator, the Son is the Redeemer, the Holy Ghost is the Sanctifier, and there is no way to have any happiness, any peace, without the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost. You want to be moral? You want to stay away from immorality? You want to be good? Then the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost. This is the only way. We cannot compromise in our holy faith. We cannot compromise in these things. We must have the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost. And what will they give to us? They will give to us the strength to overcome the coronavirus. They will give us the strength to overcome immorality of the world. We have a little test of faith going on right now. Who is going to put confidence in God? And who is going to put confidence in men? Are we waiting for better times? What is faith? Faith is, is, is the belief of things unseen, says St. Paul, and the substance of things to be hoped for. Do we see the victory of Mary? She's coming with her victory. Do you know that on the day of judgment, everyone will have the true faith? Out of the 7 billion people or 10 billion people on the earth on the day of judgment, how many of them will have the true faith? 25 billion of them. Because every single one of the living, when they see the angel come, they're going to believe. How many people believed in the flood? Everybody on earth believed in the flood when the rains came. But it did not save them. And everyone's going to believe in the angel when he comes. And everyone's going to believe in God when they're called to the Valley of Josephat. But out of the 7 or 8 or 10 billion people that are that day... 25 billion of them will believe. Why? Because the dead are going to be risen from the dead, and they're going to be brought forth. The damned are being brought out of hell, and they're going to be brought forth. And the just are coming from heaven, and the souls in purgatory are all coming before God. Everyone will believe. But it will benefit none of them, including the just. For they already believe, and they are saved. Or they already do not believe, and they are damned. When does it matter to believe? When you cannot see everything perfectly, that's when it matters to believe. This is the time that we must have faith. Can we live without our Mass? Can we live without Christ? We can be without the Mass. Priests have been without Mass. We often tell the story of St. John de Brito, who wore the red sash because of him. He was ordained a priest. Jesuit got onto a boat with nine Jesuits that went to India. 
Another boat was filled with 10 Jesuits or 12 Jesuits that went, 12 Jesuits that went to Japan. All these newly ordained priests, all 12 Jesuits died before they got to Japan. Not one lived. Out of the nine Jesuits, three lived, where St. John de, John de Vita was one, that arrived in India. And those priests, 12 and 9, 21 priests, they said maybe one mass in their entire priesthood, and they died. They spent a year in their priesthood on a boat, and they died, and they were never able to say another mass. Well, why did they live their priesthood? In order to carry Christ to souls, and most of them die without ever being able to preach a single sermon, without ever being able to go and give Christ to a single soul. And what happened? The graces of those dead Jesuits entered John de Brito, and he converted more than all of them would have converted combined, and he died a great martyr's death and a saint. We must bear testimony. The testimony of Christ must be in my spirit, that is my mind, it must be in my water, that is in my actions, and it must be done with blood, that is with life. It has to be with charity. It has to be with a divine life inside of me. So I can say the truth, I can do the actions, but if it hath not charity, it profiteth nothing. For these three must be one. And therefore we tell all Catholics, you must bear testimony. Christ said, if you bear witness to me before men, I will bear witness to you before God. Is the witness mean only words? No, the witness means these words come out in my water. They come out in cleansing my life. They come out in the, in the actions that I do. And they are done with the spirit of the divine love. This is the testimony that must be in us. And God sometimes allows throughout life a few trials. This is one of them. Small trial. Is Christ in us? Are you ready to carry Christ to the ends of the earth? We must beg the grace to be able to do that. Because three bear testimony on the earth. It is we on earth who with our faith must carry the testimony of the Father and the Son of the Holy Ghost to the ends of the earth. And the devil is terrified of one man with faith. He is not terrified with all of our weapons, with all of our computers, with all of our wisdom, with all of our whatever we have. This does not terrify the devil. But faith does. We must beg the grace to have that faith in order to have it. Let's go here. In order to have it, Remember us of the wisdom of St. John, and what did he do? He brought the Blessed Virgin Mary into his home. We must bring our Holy Mother into our home, make sure that she is always with us, and she will teach us how to have faith and have the testimony. Testimony of the mind, by which we believe the true faith without compromise. Testimony of the heart, by which we do actions that follow God, and with the spirit of charity, that the Father and the Holy Ghost be inside of us, and we carry the Father and the Son and the Holy Ghost to the very ends of the earth. We'll do that and close that. God bless you all. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Ghost. Amen.